Yes, folks, the fight back against far-left wokeness begins. Now, the other day, David Bradley, a commenter on this channel, pointed me to a recent podcast by Cross Rubicon regarding Helen Hooton's submission to a select committee about gender diversity. Now, she's the new Conservatives candidate for Christchurch East, and she is one person fighting back against this far-left wokeness. But before discussing her story, we, m we must first celebrate a recent victory in this fight. Now, can you remember uh, Harry Miller, the guy I did a video about a while back who was harassed by the UK Thought Police uh, for some so-called offensive tweets about transgenders? Anyway, he was charged with a non-crime crime, hate crime, if you can figure that out, for which he took the police to the High Court and won. Now, folks, I posted a link uh, to the other video I did about this guy in the, in the description below. Anyway, have a look at the video. It has been a long road, but Harry Miller, a former police officer, is celebrating what he's called a massive victory for free speech. People are offended, whether it's Brexit, Tories, elections, you know, in and out, whatever. It's, people are offended all the time. Simple offence cannot be a measure of um, for triggering police involvement. Mr. Exactly, and we're seeing that right now in New Zealand. We saw that in the video I covered a few days ago where the police were triggered by a guy who offended Jacinda Ardern's government. Mr Miller found himself at the centre of a hate crime investigation after he was challenged over 31 gender-critical tweets between November 2018 and January the following year. In one message he wrote, I was assigned mammal at birth, but my orientation is fish. Don't misspecies me. In another he asked, You know the worst thing about cancer? It's transphobic. He also liked a limerick posted by another account that included the phrase your vagina goes nowhere. Mr Miller's tweets and other interactions were reported to the police by a transgender woman referred to as Mrs B. It was then that officers contacted him about his comments and warned he could face prosecution. The judge has said that one, none of my tweets were even in the foothills of harassment and two, that homicide police acted like the Stasi, the Gestapo, and the checker. Now, that is quite a statement. Quite a statement, for sure. Quite a statement. But the High Court ruling stated that Humberside Police had disproportionately interfered with Mr Miller's right for freedom of expression. The Humberside Force has now issued a statement saying its handling of the incident was in good faith, but they will learn from the ruling and move forward. But trans rights campaigners fear the decision, if it's misinterpreted, could encourage people to overstep the mark. He's basically saying, look, if people are nasty to you on Twitter, just go away. And if you expand that into other areas, if people are nasty to you, just go away, then that actually sort of gives a green light to bullying. Mr Miller says his case, though, is a victory for common sense and the right to speak freely, even if others find the remarks offensive, is a basic hallmark of a functioning democracy. Yes, it sure is. And well done, Mr Miller. Anyway, now to the video about Helen Houghton. Good afternoon and thank you for the opportunity to speak to my submission today. Sure. I'm going to start by sharing an account from a parent who contacted our support group recently. So if it's okay if I just read this on here first. Yes. One of my cousin's sons had decided he was actually female. I remember visiting his school and seeing a poster up for a trans people support group at lunchtime. And my daughter decided to help him. Went along herself a couple of times to the support group where I can only guess that somehow they convinced her too that she too was transsexual. I think she was searching a bit for her true identity after being out of the country for five years. And they were so accepting, and they accept, uh, 
we're 30 years since clinic evolved. And I'm literally not exaggerating when I say she left the house that day female and returned with her hair shaved off, a chest binder on, and wearing male clothes. This counsellor had assured her that, yes, she was now male, and the best thing to do was to start on hormone blockers. And that is going on in New Zealand schools, against the will of parents. My parents and I were horrified. I didn't know how to explain it to my young sons. And at the support group, she also met a man who was assured at school that he was a female. So now my daughter is with this boy who believes he's meant to be a girl, thanks to the guidance counsellor at school. This literally is the stuff of nightmares. So please feel free to share my story and experiences with whoever and whatever you wish. People believe that all the current gender confusion won't affect their children, but believe me, it can. It has literally become a kind of brainwashing. If through our pain, we can open the eyes to other parents so they can somehow save their children from it, then I would let it be front page news. This is in New Zealand. This could have been one of my students. And as a teacher, I'm concerned for this student and for many others who are being influenced into believing a mindset that has been misrepresented. Anyway, I'll just fast forward a bit. I believe our professional integrity comes under threat when we are required to teach ideology that many of our parent community, as well as personally and professionally, we don't, we disagree with. I also shared the awareness we as teachers take around our students' mental health, which included evidence by medical professionals highlighting the danger of affirming and teaching gender fluidity. There were also accounts of people who have lived with gender dysphoria who have since detransitioned speaking out about the harms of affirming a psychological disorder. I'd like to include a quote from a young lady, Sydney Wright. This is Sydney. I was a healthy, beautiful girl. Now, this is a, an American example. Heading towards high school graduation. Before long, before long, I tuned into a overweight, pre-diabetic nightmare of a transgender man. Sydney goes on to say, it's insane to me that our society is letting this happen to young people. At 18 years old, I'm not allowed to buy, um, it's not legal to buy alcohol, but I was old enough to go to a therapist and get hormones to change my gender. I challenge you to read the rest of Sydney's story and the numerous other stories that are sharing similar life, life experiences. Anyway, I'll just fast forward again. <clears throat> I believe there are people who suffer with gender dysphoria where they feel they are in the wrong body, a psychological condition, not biological. Exactly which we must support. The feelings, however, the majority have, have not always been properly evaluated. There are 0003 to 5% of adults worldwide who are transgender, and research shows that 80 to 95% of children grow out of it. So that percentage, folks, clearly shows this is child abuse. In his article, Dr. John Whitehall says that the 28 paediatricians he spoke to reject the notion of gender fluidity. These are experts in their field, and that a large percentage are suffering with severe mental comorbidities, and those who were not diagnosed with any mental disorders had suffered sexual abuse. Yes, the environment in which a child is raised determines a lot of this. Anyway, fast forward. Critically examine has been replaced with a firm. Almost the same as climate change. And yet in our New Zealand curriculum, 
I have a list here which I could pass to you, no, which um, covers all of the state, uh, majority of the statements start with critically, um, critically, critically analyzed. And yet, um, yeah, we, what we are doing is telling our students what they should think, what they should believe. So here we go. So the highlighted ones there, for example, this is the health and physical one with all of these critically examined. The Ministry also recognises that we have five key competencies and the one that's really significant for today is the thinking competency. Students should draw on personal knowledge and intuitions, ask questions and challenge the basis of assumptions and perceptions. Like I said, we are actually telling students what to think, what to believe. There is no unbiased opportunities in these learning objectives for them to have dialogue around challenging some of the content. Wow. Communist Chinese re-education camps. Anyway, fast forward again. We cannot allow our education environments to be politically driven by ideologies of various groups. Our children are not experimental pawns for social change. Yes, she's exactly right there. But the reality is this. All of our education is left-wing. So what are the new Conservatives going to do to stop all of their brainwashing? Anyway, now listen to the unbiased Labour MP, Karen McNulty's reply to her submission. All right, we have just one minute left, so we can have a quick question from Karen McNulty. Thank you very much. Thank you for your submission. You failed to convince me that there's an issue, but I appreciate mm -hmm. your time. That says it all. Um, could you just ask? That says it all from the sky. Wow. Thank you for your time. Now, folks, I've posted a link to the entire submission video in the description below. Yes, we can clearly see from that video that Horton's submission fell on deaf ears. But at least she's fighting back against these radicals. And by the way, the new, uh, the new Conservative Party is the only party in New Zealand that is fighting for families, real families. <laughs>